Measuring an Angle You're with Mr. Rossi and today we're answering these questions. What do you use to measure an angle? Why are there two scales on a protractor? And how do we measure an angle? So firstly, what to use to measure an angle? To measure an angle, we use something that is called a protractor. There are different types of protractors. This particular protractor is a bit like a semicircle or half a circle. With this protractor, we can measure up to 180 degrees. And that's because at the bottom you can see there is a straight line. So it goes from zero all around to 180, which is what a straight line has as an angle. On the outside, it also goes from zero all the way around to 180. So that means I can measure acute or obtuse angles with this protractor. Acute angles go from, from 0 around to 90. Well, actually, they have to be less than 90 and more than 0. I can also measure acute angles that go more than a right angle up to the size of a straight line. I can't measure reflex angles with this protractor because a reflex angle would be bigger than 180. Now why are there two scales on this protractor? So there are numbers going around the inside and there are numbers that go all around the outside. So the reason is because it depends which way the angle is going. So we have an angle here. We have two lines with an angle on the inside. Now, I like to call this line at the bottom, the horizontal line, the one that's flat at the bottom, the baseline. Now, if the baseline starts on the right-hand side, like this one, the baseline is on the right hand side of the protractor. Then we will need to start from zero on the baseline and we will need to follow the numbers around on the inside until we get to the line. When we get to the line, we need to then read what it says. And it looks like it's exactly on that line and that is 170 degrees. So what about reading the numbers on the outside? Why would you have to read the numbers along the outside? Let's see why. To do that, let's flip over our angle And let's line it again. Let's line it up again on the protractor. So we can see now that, okay, all right, the baseline is now on the left hand side. Yes, this flat line. Now, if the baseline starts on the left, then you'll need to start from zero on the baseline, and we'll be using the numbers on the outside, and we're going to be going around to the right. So we're going to be going around, following the numbers on the outside this time, until we get to the line. When we get to the line, and we read where that mark is, we can see the mark is for 170 again. And this time we're reading the outside because we started on the outside. 
So let's just go over that. The rule is, if we start on the inside like we did the first time, then that means we have to read the numbers on the outside all the way around. If we start on the outside like we did this time, yeah, with zero on the outside, that means we have to read the numbers on the outside all the way around to our line. Now, measuring an angle. Let's follow the steps that we have here. The first thing is we want to try to work out, before we even start, what type of angle is this. Now, it looks less than an L shape. So, that means it's acute. And it's a good idea to even write that down somewhere next to your angle so that you don't forget about that. We now want to turn the lines, the angle, until we have a flat baseline. Okay, now you would normally be doing this with a piece of paper. So you would need to turn the piece of paper around until, look, there we go. We've got a line which is flat on the bottom. So, once we've turned it and we have a line flat at the bottom, that's going to be our baseline, we can now slide our protractor over the top of our angle. Now to do this properly, we need to make sure that the point where the two lines meet, so we're talking about in here, yeah, those lines meet right there where the corner is. Yeah, basically there. We want our protractor to sit right there where that dot is. And we want the center of our protractor, the middle of our protractor, to go straight on top of that dot. So we want this to go on top of that dot. So let's do that now. Let's slide as it says here on the steps on the side, slide it until the center of the protractor is right on that corner. Now, if we've turned the page properly, when we go across, our baseline should now be on zero. So, we can see we are going to be starting from zero and we are using the inside numbers and now the next thing we can do is measure the angle so for these two steps the sliding and the measuring we actually need the protractor for these other steps we don't really need the protractor so now let's measure it let's start from zero and although we're following the numbers on the inside we actually also need to use these little marks on the outside, but then when we read the angle, we need to use the numbers on the inside to help us. So each of the tiny little steps, each of these is actually one angle. So right here, that would be one angle, one degree and this one would be two degrees, and this would be three degrees, four degrees. Now when there's a bigger line like this one, a little bit longer, that would be five degrees. So that's five degrees, that little bit longer one, that would be five degrees. Because remember, we're starting from zero, and we're counting up. Now we don't normally count one, two, three, four, five, because we know that that little bit longer line is five, and the ones with the marks on them, um, with the numbers marked on them, they're the ones that jump up in tens. So that's why we've got 10 here with this longer line. And then the next longer line with the numbers next to it is 20. And then the next longer line with the numbers is 30. So it's going up in tens there. But in between, halfway in between, we have the fives. So this here would be 
25. And this one here would be 15. But let's have a look at the one we're measuring. So if that's 5, and this one here is 10, you can see we're reading the numbers on the inside because we started reading from the inside at zero, then this would be one degree less. It's one degree smaller. So that means this would be nine degrees. So it's nine degrees. Now, our last step is to check. And how are we going to check? We're going to make sure that whatever we started with whatever the decision was at the beginning about the type of angle, is it true with what we've measured? So we've measured that it's nine degrees. Would nine degrees be an acute angle? Because that's what we decided at the beginning. Is it acute? Acute means it's less than a right angle. So it's less than 90 degrees. Is nine degrees less than 90 degrees? Well, yes, it is. So it is an acute angle. So we know we have measured this correctly. Now let's try another angle. So let's follow the same steps. Let's see if they work again. So the first thing we want to do before we even start touching the, the angle, start touching the page, is just thinking about what type of angle is it? Is it acute or is it obtuse? Because with this protractor, we can only measure acute or obtuse angles anyway. And, and we know that this angle is a little bit less than an L shape, because an L shape would be coming out here. So it's a little bit, sorry, a little bit more than an L shape. So that means it is obtuse. And it's more than an L shape, but it's less than a straight line. Of course, a straight line would be coming out here. It's less than that. So now the second step is to turn your page until the angle yeah, has the bottom line flat, perfectly horizontal. And I might flip this over so that we can get used to using both scales on the protractor. So let's flip this. Let's face it the other way. Okay, so we've turned it, we've turned our page, and we have the baseline which is flat now. Our next step is to slide our protractor onto the angle, on top of it in, in the exactly the right position. So where those two lines meet, yeah, you can imagine a little dot there in that corner. That's exactly where we want the center of our, of our protractor. So let's slide it over the top. And if we've done that properly, then we should have our baseline, which also goes across, and it will go and meet up with zero. Now we have a little bit of a problem here, and that is this line is a little bit short. And if we look at this line, this line's a bit short too. It doesn't go up. It's a bit hard later on when we have to read the protractor because this line isn't long enough to go up and cross these little marks on the protractor. So that means we have to make these lines longer. We need to extend these lines. So if you have this problem, then in here you might need an extra step and that is you need to decide do I need to extend the lines? Do I need to make the lines longer? So let's do that now. If you need to extend the lines, be very careful that when you draw them, when you draw them, they go exactly over the top of the existing line. So this one, we want to make sure it's right on top of it. And this one, of course, we want to use a ruler. We want to be very careful. It goes exactly over the top of the other line. 
Okay, so now we have both lines long enough that we can measure the angle using the marks on the outside of the protractor. The lines have to be long enough to go past the edge of the protractor, past these little marks on the protractor. And both the lines are now past the little marks. So we've extended the lines, we can now measure our angle. Now we can see our baseline starts on the left hand side of the protractor. So that means we're going to start on the left and we're going to go around to the right. And we can't start from 180, so we're not using the inside numbers. We have to start from zero, so we're using the outside numbers. And let's go around and measure this. Let's go all the way around until we get to our line. And we're remembering we're using the outside numbers, so we know that this line is somewhere about a hundred degrees. It seems to be either a little bit more or a little bit less than a hundred. How do we know whether it's more or less? Well let's check what's happening with the numbers. We started with zero and it went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So what's happening to the numbers? They're getting bigger aren't they as we go around to the right. So this line is a little bit past 100, so that means it must be a little bit more than 100. Now, if that's 100 there, then this next mark must be 101, and the one after that must be 102. So this angle should be 102 degrees. So let's do our check which is our last step. Now what was the type of angle that we decided this this was at the beginning? Was it acute or obtuse? Yes, we decided it was obtuse because it was bigger than 90 degrees, it was bigger than an L shape. So is that true? Is 102 degrees obtuse? Well yes, it is because an obtuse angle must be bigger than 90 degrees and 102 is bigger than 90 degrees and an obtuse angle also must be less than 180 and 102 degrees is less than 180. So now let's check. Do we know the answers to these questions? So you might like to pause the video and you might like to see if you can answer these three questions. What do I use to measure an angle? Why are there two scales on a protractor? And how do we measure an angle? So pause the video now and try to answer these questions. So let's see what answers you got to these questions. Let's see if you're correct. So the first question, what do I use to measure an angle? Very simply, we use a protractor. And this particular protractor can measure up to 180 degrees, either using the outside lines going on this way all the way up to 180, which is a straight line, or going this way, starting from zero all the way around to 180. We can measure up to the size of a straight line. So that means we can measure acute or obtuse angles with this protractor. Our second question, why are there two scales on a protractor? And the reason is because it depends whether the baseline, this horizontal line, starts on the left hand side or whether it starts on the right hand side. If it starts on the left, we're going to start from zero and use the outside numbers until we get to our line and then measure using the outside numbers. If our baseline, our flat horizontal line, starts on the right hand side, we're going to use the inside numbers. We're going to start from zero and go around until we get to our line and then measure it using the inside numbers. Our final question is, how do we measure an angle? 
So let's go over the steps that we use very briefly. Firstly, we decide on the type of angle. Is it acute? Is it obtuse? And it's helpful to even write it down next to the angle you are measuring. So because we'll need that information when we do the check at the end. We then turn the angle. So normally we would turn the page until the baseline is flat, until it's horizontal. And then our next step is to slide our protractor over the top so that the corner where the two lines meet, that, that corner, the exact point where they meet, we're going to put the protractor over the top so that the center of the protractor is exactly over that point in the corner. We may need to extend the lines. If our lines are too short, we may need to make them longer until they go past the edge of the protractor um, for both of the lines. We then want to measure the angle. So that means we will start from zero. In this case, we'll start from zero on the outside and we will follow the outside numbers and then we will measure using the outside numbers. And our final step is to check. And we checked for this one by thinking about 102 degrees. Is that obtuse? And we decided yes, so we thought that we had measured correctly.